please meet Rob Davio, the person who has been in gaming industry for many, many years, but for too many years has been under the radar and only suddenly a couple of years ago everybody's talking about him. Well, for the reason though, from my side as well, congratulations for reaching top one. Thank you. BGG. Yeah, think, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, it's quite an achievement, isn't yes, it? Yes, I still don't quite believe it. Yeah, yeah. And especially with such a short time. It was less than a year, I think, since the published game. Uh, the game came out a year ago right now, yeah. but it went from published to number one in two and a half months. So. Amazing. Yeah. But uh, maybe that's a slightly weird comparison, but which one would you value more? Either BDG Top 1 or, for example, Spiel des Jahres? Because it was nominated for Kinderspiel des Jahres. Yeah, it was nominated, didn't win. I, uh, I maybe, oh God, that's hard to say. Okay. I mean, I like that the BGG is, is a lot of people, yes. which meant that a lot of people liked it. But then the Spiel des Jahres is 12 people who take it very seriously yeah. and think it through. So, I don't know. I, so, like Spiel des Jahres is more like something official, official. Yeah. While BDG is more like gamers decide. Yep. Gamers choice. Both are actually really important. So, but I know that you have figured out or got the like main idea of legacy mechanic many years ago. Mm -hmm. Why it took so much time to get it published or to get the game? Oh no! I mean, I thought of it in two thousand eight, not nine, eight oh, or okay. nine, and then and then Risk Legacy came out in two thousand eleven. It okay. took like yep, yep. a year and a half, two years to make that. Right. And yeah. then then I left Hasbro. And then Matt and I started working on Pandemic Legacy in 2013, and it came out two years later. So they take a long time to make. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the first published Legacy game was uh, Risk Legacy. Yeah. But it, well, it created some buzz, but it didn't create such a splash as Pandemic. No. Any ideas why? Um, I don't think Hasbro really know what to do with Risk Legacy. Okay. It, that had no advertising. It had no promotion. It had no, like we sent five copies to reviewers. All right. Okay. And that was it. Um, whereas Z-Man really got behind this, did international versions and promotions and really took the time to, to get attention to it. And it was building off the pandemic brand, which for the past eight years has been growing yeah. and growing and growing. And risk is known, but it's, you yes. know, going down, so. It, yeah, plus it's maybe it's not as gamery. Oh, it's not yeah. as gay. It's not as gamer. I had like an idea as well why it could have been maybe like one of the reasons or theories is that like when the Risk Legacy came out, uh, it wasn't like gaming world wasn't yet ready for legacy style and like play once games. So the replayability was the keyword when rating the games and when choosing the games. Mm -hmm. While this has definitely changed, so the replayability is not as important as emotion and experience. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe the Pandemic Legacy came out just on time, like when... Uh, yeah, I, I, I have no idea why it did as well as yeah. it did. I mean, I like it, I think it's a good yeah. game, and when, it, when, it was, when I was making it, I was like, this is coming together really well. Mm -hmm. You know, saying to my friends or anything, I, I'm like, I can just tell this is gonna be yeah. a good game, but no one expected this. Right, 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 I totally believe you, yeah. We knew it's gonna be something amazing, something different, something unique, but yeah, top one so quickly. Yeah, no, I, thank you. <laughs> right, thank you to all. Thank you. I know that what you both mentioned that you started working, when you left, I think when, when you left Casbro, you started working on a legacy game, but uh, you got interrupted by Pandemic Legacy. Uh, yeah, Pandemic Legacy and other games and yeah. paying my bills and starting a company. And but that game that you started working on, is it like forgotten or is it the Seafall? It's Seafall. Oh, Seafall, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. just wondering, I was yeah. like, which one is that? Can you slightly compare these two games? Not the theme, but more like a gameplay, maybe mechanics, yeah. the feel? Um, they're very different in feel. Like if people liked Pandemic Legacy Season 1, Seafall is not the natural next game for that. That will be season two next yeah. year. This is more of a, it's competitive. It's a longer game. It takes about two hours to play each one. It is more of a engine building Euro game with some American fighting in there. It's about exploration. Okay. So it's a very different game for a very different audience. We had to choose. Uh, last year we knew that there is coming Seafall and you is coming Pandemic Legacy. We had to pick one of them because we didn't have time for both. 
to get to get through all of them, and we had to choose one. We cho chose uh, Seafall. Haven't tried it yet, but okay. looking for it. Okay. Yeah. You, um, you, and you mentioned that um, it takes a lot much, a lot more time to create a game, like a style game, than other games. Yeah, it takes about the same amount of work as three to five regular games because you're making a game or starting with a game and then you have to figure out all the things that will come in. They're almost like expansions. So you're designing right. a game, six expansions, a story, yeah. and then putting it all together and then making sure it's manufacturable. Right, right. So. And the balance uh, in uh, the legacy style game seems much more important and on the same time much harder to, do, to achieve as well. Yeah, that's one so. of the reasons Seafall took so long is I didn't want the person who bought a lot of cannons to yeah. just ruin everyone else's day. So like there's a lot of balancing not only within a game but between games and uh, my question is regarding playtesting. Um, can't wrap my mind around it. So if for example uh, in legacy style game there like there are puzzles to solve or some mysteries or surprises, how do you playtest them? I mean like doesn't don't you need a new group for every Yep. You do? Yep. And normally if you get a group to play eight games that's like eight times you feel like you've got a lot of value and then this is you've played half of a campaign so you get new groups all the time but you, you, you need to use fewer groups and then what Matt and I did with with Pandemic is we had them video yeah. themselves playing and we watched every every minute and took uh. notes um, so we would have two or three groups playing at a time, and then we would watch over the course of weeks and take notes on all their videos, mm -hmm. and then do a new version, Right. and right. then give it to different groups and watch them, and we just keep doing it until our notes are not major, but minor, and then minuscule, and then... So that process sounds different from the regular playtesting of like usual games. It's something that Matt does, and I don't know if he does it on a, on a regular basis on other projects, but he suggested it here. And it works very well, and I've started to use it okay. in other places. With you know, when people are, are videoing, eventually you lose track of the camera, uh -huh. and then you start like if yeah. you know if I start getting on my phone and and doing things, you know, it, it says to me like, oh, they're bored with the game, and yeah. you, you see a lot of things of at the end of it. Right. When you ask people how did the game play, they're like, oh, it's great. Any problems with the rules? They're like, no, it was very clean. But if you see on videotape, there might yeah. have been three times where they were very confused right. that they forgot about. Right, yeah, that sounds like a good tip. Yeah. Tell me honestly now, how popular are you now? How many uh, co-designing projects have been uh, offered? Um, well, more than last year, <laughs> and then more than the year before. I don't know what to compare. I'm having a very good year. Okay. And I'm enjoying this year, and I will not have many years like it. Yeah. Right? But I had this year, and it's great that I had it. Um, so I am in a position now where... I can look at a project and decide whether it's a good fit okay. for me. I think a couple of years ago, so people were like, you want to work on a game? I'd say, yes. Right. And then I start working and oh. it's not a great fit. I'm like, oh, I don't have an idea. And now I'm just saying, hey, I don't think I'll have a good idea for that. I'm not the right person for this. I thought about it for a couple of days and I don't really know how to approach this. And then I have to pass on it. And it's so hard to pass on things because my heart wants to be, yeah. yes, yes, I'll work on that. And then I, I just can't do that yeah. many games. Right. And so... I'm learning how to say this isn't a good fit for me, which is very, very strange. But how do you decide it's not a good fit for you? If I don't have a good idea, either I'll hear a project and I'll be like, oh, I know what to do. Okay. And it won't always work. I'll have to iterate and change it and make it better, but I have an idea of how to start. And sometimes I just think about a game and I go, I don't really know what to do here. Yeah. And then I, I know when I'm in that place, it's gonna be a ton of right. work. And so if I say to people, Oh, that sounds interesting. Give me a week to kind of think about it, and then I can come back and say, yeah, I'm not the guy for you. All right. Right, I don't have anything good. But, yeah, no, I'm co-designing. That guy and I are working on something. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> no, let's not skip some questions. I'll ask that about that later on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, Eric Lang is there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you know any others that are picking up Legacy? Uh, legacy, like designing legacy theme. I have heard that there's a lot of them being pitched here at uh -huh. the show. 
And then I think everyone's going to do something a little different. I think some people are going to take the part of you open in a package, yep. but not the permanent. Okay. And some people are going to make it short, and some people are going to make it storytelling. It's kind of a, a lot of different pieces that go into it, and I think everyone's going to take the pieces of it that they like. And I'm really looking forward to playing one because I never have. Yeah, I, I told them. I'm like, oh, and I want to see what people do with it and how they make it different and where it goes from here. You know, it's, it's fun. So that means that you actually created a, a, at least smaller revolution in gaming world. So it, it is something something different. You really, I don't know, like created major change in the gaming world. Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. What, let's talk about it in five years when we have some perspective. And right, then, right. We need some time to pass right. for that. So... What's that? Fabled yes, that they, they Fabled Fruits did a Fable game, which is it says right on the box. This is not a legacy game, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it takes right. some of the pieces of as you play, you'll get new cards, and then when you start the next game, those cards are already in play. But if you ever get tired of this, you can just reset it back yeah. to start. Because I, I thought it was a really, really strange thing for me to say. No, you write on it, and it's done, and it's a one-way trip. But I like that it it raised the stakes. It's like playing going to a casino, yep. right? You feel like it's real money, it's real value. <laughs> and I thought that that was important, but I totally see how other people can be like, I don't I don't like that. I'm surprised that anyone liked it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you have, I know that you're now uh, working full-time as game designer for a couple of years? Four years. Four years. So how do you like it? Did it meet your expectations? Is it like a dream come true? Uh, some days. Um, but it's me running a business by myself. So some days I get up and I write checks and I go to the bank uh -huh. and I buy paper yeah. and I answer emails and I do all these businessy things right. and I get to the end and go, oh, I didn't do any design. Right. Right. So I think I have this, had a fantasy of I just get up every day and have eight hours of design and magically right. all the business stuff but happens. I think, I think you just need some more time to grow bigger, hire a person to do all those boring paper thingy that you can yeah. concentrate on and design. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm close. Actually, my wife, we met at Hasbro, she's a graphic designer uh -huh. and a production artist, and she now works with me one day a week. Oh. And so now when I have an idea, I'm like, we need a prototype, and she, she's a gamer. She's here somewhere playing games. Amazing. And, um, and she makes the prototypes and prints them out and does all the, organizes the internal playtesting and the external playtesting, and just that little piece that I could remove right. has changed things tremendously just in the past month. Amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So I'm getting there. Yeah. Like, I know, like, working with a spouse is, like, on the edge. Yeah. It can be either amazing or disaster. Yeah. But if there is a, something that one person likes more, another person likes less, and there's, like, a balance, it might work out. It works out. We, were, we, were, we talked about this for years. First of all, we had worked together at Hasbro before we started dating and worked well together. And she's always going to be one or two days a week so it'll be my design in my company with her helping right if it was full-time both of us it could be like if we have different ideas yeah. and, and then we're working together and living you know yes. and it's like too much but we're yeah. like one day a week it's it's been fantastic so i hired a really well yeah i guess hired like i'm partnered up with a really good graphic designer production person gamer who i happen to be in love with and married to she didn't get the Sounds perfect yeah well, we are a couple as well, uh, not in the uh, design industry, but still like in a gaming world and review. Yeah. Uh, got married this uh, summer and for us... Uh, Congratulations. Worked, thank you. For us, it really worked out as well because we like slightly different things in the gaming world. Yep. So he likes, for example, knowing about the games and like people and companies behind the games, for okay. example. So in essence, it works absolutely amazingly for us. So. Can you, like, just let's wrap up with quite a usual question. Tell us about what you're talking, what are you working on with, with that guy, maybe? Uh, I can't talk about what I'm working on with, with Eric. That's, uh, I have learned that if I talk about something too early, especially with yep. legacy games, and they take a while, it builds expectations, I have to apologize, right. so I'm, I'm more private about things. Pandemic legacy... But you just mentioned that it's going to be a legacy-style game. Before that, we didn't know. Oh, with him? <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, no, okay. No, no, I'm just saying in general, what the projects I'm working on, right. Legacy and right. or yeah. other co-designs. Okay. Um, like, we were working on something, and then we just said, oh, we're busy, and we didn't touch it for two months. Right, okay. But since we don't have a date, that's not a problem. As soon as we have a date, yeah. it becomes a problem. Um, is uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2 is out next year. Sea Falls out now. Uh, I am 
signed a game with Yellow that'll be out next year called Mountains of Madness, which is a Cthulhu game. And I have a number of things in playtesting this fall that I can talk about probably in January okay. or February. I think so. I've heard bits and pieces about that game. And, and, and oh, the Mountains of Madness? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's kind that, of a, another that, bizarre idea. Right, right. But that sound, sounded interesting. Yeah, I always thought it was no fair that in Cthulhu games the characters went crazy, but the players didn't. So I'm like, I, I want the players to go crazy. Right, because that will be like the theme. That would be something you would feel, not yeah. just on the board. I, and I've had, I've had people get done and go, I, I feel like I just had half an hour being a little, <laughs> a little like someplace else. I'm like, yes, it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And then you have the Chronicles Origins as well, right? Chronicles Origins, that's another one, like when we talk about talking about things early is, you know, it's a very complicated series of games and a complicated right. project. And at one point this summer, we just said, oh, we're making a mess. Uh -huh. Let's throw it away and take two months off and come back to it, which we've done. And now we're back on track with that. But because we had talked about it and shown something earlier, it's a lot of sorry. And this is later right. and things. I'm making these, I'm partnering and making these slightly different games sometimes. And I underestimate how much time that's going to take. And so I've learned, I almost don't want to talk about games till they're on the boat. Okay. Yeah, I told you this, that I think I would be the same. Plus, it's always a good surprise to yeah. hear about the game when you're going to get it like a couple of months already. Yeah, so. and, and I came out, well, I was so excited out of Hasbro, like, I'm making this game Seafall, and I thought it would be out within a year, and it yeah. was three years. Yeah. And so expectations are up here right. and down right. here. and. And, and it's, it, it caused a lot of problems right. to, can mess up. for design and marketing that I created myself. So I'm trying to learn. This guy is really looking forward to Chronicles Origins. Okay. I might be slightly more, well, at least I'm intrigued in the Yellow Gate Mon Mountains of Madness. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try to earn your respect on that game. Right. Okay. With Going Crazy? Uh, well, no, more the Origins <laughs> one. See if you can come around to it. Oh. Yeah, no, that one, that one should, yeah, no, that one's, it's a Cthulhu party game almost. Yeah, that's interesting. That yeah. sounds, sounds intriguing. So, thanks a lot for thank you. having us, for talking. Thank you. And see you next year in Essen, most probably, hopefully. Or... Yeah, well, I should be. Okay, great. Okay. See ya. See ya.